So welcome back to spirituality through the eyes of Salok Mahela Nova where we are looking at where Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji openly reveals what spirituality is about what the purpose of life is about and even though some Saloks link with each other and some don't every single Salok is a pearl, is a treasure that explains what the purpose of life is that explains different stages of spirituality different aspects of spirituality some over and over again in order to let it get through and let it sink in because we have to understand spirituality once again as a reminder spirituality is not about how you're going to make your life as a person better spirituality is not about using God to make the life of the person better spirituality is first of all to realize what you are and then to realize the relation of what you are with your source and then to meet a guru and then to get the instructions to get the way of living that will create a relationship between you once you have discovered what you are and God so this is a key point that spirituality actually begins when you realize what you are spirituality is about the spirit it's about the soul it's about you and then understanding what your part then is in this life you see so spirituality the key word there is spirit whether you want to call it spirit or soul it is what you are it is the drop of the ocean of God so spirituality is about that drop you see it's not about anything else it's not about glorifying this temporary personality because how long is this temporary personality that you think you are how long is this gonna last do you even know how long it's gonna last for but what you are that permanent that has always been the same regardless of what what incarnation you're in that same chola if you want to call it or dress the dress changes but the one that wears the dress the one that wears the different clothes the one that wears the different bodies that one's the same you see so it's the discovery of that which has not changed and the soul itself has not changed and that's why it is a drop and a reflection of God because God is the unchanging one and as a being a part of the unchanging one you are also unchanging but if you continue to mistake yourself to be that which changes then you're going to be caught up in that and that is called Maya that is called delusion because the soul is deluding itself with its covering something that's covering it apparently covering it because nothing can taint the soul nothing can cover the soul in that way it just needs to be discovered not uncovered discovered because nothing is covering it so when you discover what you are by the Guru's grace that is what spirituality is and that's where spirituality begins So Guru Sahib continues with Jo Prani Mamta Taja Lob Mo Ahankar Kaho Nanak Apan Tare Auran Let Udhar. So he says he, he refers to human beings as Prani. You remember Prani? Prani he's reminding you, he's saying, Oh you who depend on the life breath. Jo Prani that being he's not referring to you as a human being he's referring to you to remind you that hey you who think you are 
something who think you are something by itself you're really a creature that's dependent on this life breath without this life breath you don't exist he's referring to the person because as a soul you always exist however in this life in this expression to be manifested in this way the life breath is necessary and Guru Sahib reminds us by just this one word prani that we are dependent on the pran on the life breath so he says jo prani mamta taja that one that being who is dependent on the life breath which means this person that we have taken ourselves to be so the first stage is realizing that hum admi ha ikdami realize that as a person you don't have countless time you only have this one breath there's only one breath at any given time one breath goes you cannot take two breaths one breath goes in the same breath comes out another breath goes in another breath comes out but you can only take one breath at a time and when that breath goes out and does not come in then that shows the nature of the prani because the body goes the prani dies you see so we don't really have many breaths we only have one breath but while having this one breath we forget and we continue to create so many grand stories in our head about how tomorrow is going to be how next year is going to be how 10 years from now it's going to be while forgetting there's only one breath the one that's currently going in right now and that will come out even the next breath is not guaranteed we don't live as though this is true we forget and hence the guru continues to remind us because we forget we forget that this breath is only one breath that's what your life is dependent on your life is dependent on one breath that's it breath goes out does not come in finished that's how fragile everything is and we think we control everything we're trying to get everything under control getting this person under control getting that situation under control trying to change the whole world trying to change the whole circumstance and situation in order to please this one person that is so fragile that even if one breath does not come back in they're gone is that worth it so spirituality shows us pay attention to that which does not change don't make your whole life a lot many years have already been wasted don't waste your whole life trying to change everything to suit the comforts and discomforts of the person you've taken yourself to be because what you find comfortable and uncomfortable is actually just a condition it's a conditional thing that's mental psychological karmic you see it is not what you are you are trying to cater to the covering you got this time around in this life you have this kind of conditioning right but you yourself are not really conditioned but you think without knowing it you think that your life is about trying to make this one comfortable it's not guru sahib has already said guru arjan dev ji says pai parapat manuk de horia you have gotten a human birth What's the purpose of this birth? Guru Sahib says, "Gobind Milan ki yeh teri bariya." Now that you've gotten a human birth, after we don't know how long, what is your purpose? Only to meet God. Gobind Milan, not Tundan, not finding, meeting. You don't have to find God. God's not anywhere far. You have to meet God. गोविंद मिलन के है तेरी बरिया अवर काज तेरा कित है ना काम एनी अदर वर्क यू डू थिंकिंग दैट यू आर दिस पर्सन सी इफ इफ यू आर वर्किंग फॉर द पर्सन दैट यू बिलीव योर सेल्फ टू बी देन यू आर स्पेंडिंग योर लाइफ व्हिच इज द एसेंस ऑफ ट्रूथ यू आर स्पेंडिंग द एसेंस ऑफ ट्रूथ ऑन दैट व्हिच इज फॉल्स द पर्सन इज फॉल्स इट्स टेंपरेरी that which is real is what you really are but forgetting that and going for the temporary 
then you have wasted your life. So Guru Sahib is avar kaj tera kitena kam. All other things you do other than finding God will not be the right use of this human body. How, but how do you find it? Do you go on your own? Do you start doing pilgrimages? Do you just go whatever your mind says and do that? No. Mil sadh sangat bhaj keval naam. Meet the sadh sangat. Another thing to clarify. What is sadh sangat? What is sadh? See, we have come under the misunderstanding that sadh sangat simply means a group of people getting together. And we have been under this for under this misunderstanding for a very long time. A group of people getting together is just a group of people. It's not a sad sangat. If everyone who has who's meeting, if there's a hundred people who are meeting and their minds are all, all over the place and they talk all different things, do you, can you call that a sad sangat? No. What is sad? Sad are those who are training their minds, who are doing sadhana. They're doing sadhana, they're doing practice. What are they practicing for? To, f to meet God. They're practicing to remove these apparent coverings that we have covered over ourselves. So they're practicing, they're looking, they're, they're, sh they're, they're training themselves to realize what they are. So when you meet such people, that's called a sadh sangat. When you meet someone who's trained their minds already, when you meet someone who's already God realized, when you meet with such people who are in their company, that is sadh sangat. That's where you're going to meet God. You're not going to meet God just by meeting a bunch of people who are just walking the wrong place. Haven't you ever heard of the blind leading the blind? You see what I mean? So, it's not about a group of people meeting. You have to look at what's the intention behind that meeting. How, how serious are these people? Not serious as in downcast and all of that, but serious in the sense that how true are they? What's, what's their integrity like? How much does the audio match the video? What I mean to say is how much do they live what they say? You see? Like in my case, you're listening to me right now. I can't, I can't tell you, I can't really say that I am living 100% what I'm saying. I'm attempting to. But if we meet sincere people who are attempting to, to do that, not just trying to look good, not just trying to sound good, but really looking for it, really making their lives about finding God. If you meet such people, then that kind of attraction to wanting to discover the truth that becomes more real that is the sad sangat mil sad sangat bhaj keval naam and only meet the sad sangat meet the company of the devotees meet the company of the beloveds of god meet the company and only focus on the name focus on the name of god In every Bani in the Guru Granth Sahib, in every Bani of any saint you talk about, any saint you listen to, the focus on this aspect of the name is very important. Because the name of God is what will wash out the delusion inside you. Many people say, what do we get by repeating? Because even they'll even point out different Bani's that say, but you repeat, then what happens? Because even Bani says, if you repeat, Ram Ram Karta Sab Jag Phire, Ram Na Paya Jai, by saying Ram Ram, nothing's going to happen because, you know, you don't get to meet God. God is not a toy. Well, in that Bani, it says, Ram Ram Karta Sab Jag Phire. He says, by saying Ram Ram with your mouth to show other people, by going around trying to look holy, that's different. Guru Sahib is now talking about intention. But a double meaning of Sab Ram Ram Karta Sab Jag Pira is also the one who says Ram Ram with his mouth but the mind is going all over the place. And he's not even attempting, they're not even attempting to bring back the mind onto the name. But the mouth is saying it mechanically. You're not going to find God like that because your mind is not on it. 
so the key point is the mind has to be on it the intention has to be sincere god is only seeing your intention god's not seeing anything else your efforts will be determined by your intention and your sincerity you see but everything else will happen by god's grace but your intention is very important it's not about looking holy it's not about sounding spiritual it's about have you realized that you don't have much time have you realized that even if you have 30 years it's not much time if we just sit with our minds for 5 minutes just sit down 5 minutes even if we can do that let's say that's saying a lot even you can just sit 5 minutes with your mind and see the condition that it's in do you think you'll meet god with that kind of mind how much work do you think you'll need to do on that mind how much more you know what needs to be done for that mind to really settle when you realize that then you realize wow this is really something i have to work on when you realize that that with this current mind that you have even though you're not the mind but you continue to get distracted by the mind you're not going to find god the mind will lead you in all different directions you will not find god so this makes us humble this makes us sincere this makes us realize we should find god that's what the purpose of this life is the purpose of the life is not to sorry when i say find god i don't mean find god as in going to look for god find god meaning finding god because god's here inside within and the sadh sangat and the name will help you to find god the guidance of a guru will help you to find god and that's what's important and during the steps there are different things to eliminate different things to contemplate different things to to get rid of that will naturally drop out from your life and this is what guru sahib is explaining in shlok 22 right now where he says jo prani mamta taj lobh moh ahankar he says that being who removes their sense of self mamta mamta means something that's mind attachment but attachment only means it's mind that's why you're attached to it you see you're only attached to that which you already consider as yours you're not attached to something that you don't consider as yours so when you move the yourness out of it the mamta that's the mamta mam means me so mamta when you remove the meanness out of your life meanness jo prani mamta taj lob greed greed to get more for me so the key here is the me lob mo ahankar ahankar is i'm doing doing for who for me i'm doing it's me so the one who discards the meanness then kaho nanak apan tar hai the one who has discarded the me the meanness the sense that i am something i do everything i need everything to be in my control everything needs to be mine i need to accumulate more for the safety and security of myself my family all of that when the me is seen through and that naturally gets seen as false and when that does happen guru sahib says that being is free apan tarah that person is already liberated but not only that auran let udhar also helps others just by getting rid of the meanness the person becomes liberated and is then capable of helping others to see through the falseness of their me you see so in this one line already there's so much depth because what is this me what is this me that our whole life revolves around like just think right now all the thoughts that you have revolve around a me revolve around you the thought of where you're going to go next is for you what will i have for dinner it's for you what am i going to do next week it's for you how much does this job pay it's for you 
But you say, no, no, it's not just for me. It's for my family as well. But I say, it's my family. It's your family. The me is still there, you see. No matter how selfless it seems, there is a payoff. And that payoff is, it's mine. So I'm going to do whatever it takes for mine. My country. My family. My religion. My whatever. It's mine. And that meanness itself is the delusion, is the delusory factor and the delusion itself. And the one who's free from the me-ness is then liberated and is able to liberate others to help them to see through that as well. So how do we get rid of the me? Think about this. This is a very cunning strategy. Because now the me wants to get rid of the me. For what? So that the me can be greater. You see, I want to meet God. I want to meet God. So that the I can get the greatness of having met God. It's still me. And as long as that's the mentality, you will never meet God. Because to meet God means to meet your true source. And your true source cannot be met as long as you're holding on to the false. You see? It's not that you can't meet God. You, as you think you are, is just imagination. The real part of you is a part of God, is a reflection of God. That's the part you have to discover first. By the Guru's grace, when you discover that, when you realize you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the person you have taken yourself to be, then you realize what's really here. What is this presence? What is this that's been with me my whole life? What has been with me? The statement I'm forming right now is wrong in, rea in, in terms of reality, but it will serve for now. Okay? So just follow through with it. What is it in me that has been with me for all of my life? See, my body has changed. This is not the same body when I was six. This is not the same body when I was 14. This is not the same body when I was 24. This, in fact, is not even the same body I had last week because all the cells have been well, washed out and different things and different hairs have been growing. You know, suddenly you'll find a white strand of hair one day. Hmm? So it's just one of those things where it's not even the same. So the body cannot be what I am because I realize that I still feel the same as I always was. The body has changed, but the sense of being has always been the same. As a five-year-old, I thought differently. Thinking has changed, but the being that is aware of memory the being is the same. So this being is not really a person. You see, because what is a person? A person is a combination of characteristics of the body, the actions that they do, ahankar, because they think they're the doer of it. So the things they have done, your accomplishment, your whole CV is basically mamta, Ahankar, and you know, it's a description of what you're not. Your CV is not what you are. What you are is what has always been. So, to discover that through either Simran, through attending satsangs, through meeting the teachers and taking sadhana seriously, you know, and realizing what you are, that is how you discover what you are and when you discover what you are you don't have to throw away what you're not you realize it's not what you are so you become more stable as that which you are 
and when that's the case you become liberated from the falsehood and you become able through simply living as what you are you become able to help others you help others as well simply by being yourself your true self you see because you can help to point out the true self in others because their true nature is also that unchanging one in the next salok Guru Sahib says he's taking a turn now he's taking a turn a different different idea now Jyo Supna or Pekna Aise Jaga Ko Jaan In Mein Kach Sa Cho Nahi Nanak Bin Bhagawan Guru Sahib says Jyo Supna or Pekna Supna is a dream Guru Sahib says realize that this world is just like a dream it's just something you're seeing you can't touch what you're seeing you can touch objects even in your dream you can touch objects but where are they when you wake up so even in this life you touch everything everything you take as yours or whatever it is when you die it gets left here where is it where is it in that moment we have attended many funerals what did the person leave with no matter how rich they were in their life what did they leave with even the coffin they were put in burnt and then when you put them when you go and collect the ashes the next following day you can't even tell which ash is them and which one is the wood and which one is what and how much of them is really there them is not even them anymore it's just ash that's the nature of this body which you currently take to be yourself I remember once going to a funeral next morning went to pick up the ashes and it was a funeral of a maybe it was a I, I'm assuming it is someone close to me that's why I went but I was amazed because it was one of the first funerals where I actually went for this um, collecting the ash time and then so when the ash gets collected it gets put into a bag and when I saw that bag I said, it's a very small bag you know and the entire ash fits into that bag and then you start thinking this person during their lifetime had so many worries I mean if the person was 70 80 years old and they started getting worried about their life and all of this stuff ever since they were maybe 20 or whatever that's 60 years of worries 60 years of I need to control my life in this certain way or in life needs to turn out this way and look at how many problems I had and look at this person and look at that person and all of this kind of stuff and all of that is in the bag so in my head naturally the question was is that the outcome of, is that what all the worries and everything is worth that's it fits into the bag the whole person's life fits into that bag yes because the life of this world the life of simply accumulating and living you see it's a life that is not real it's like a dream because if we take the theory of reincarnation to be true see I have to speak of it that way because it depends on the listeners right but the fact is we'll go into that some other time but let's say okay this is not your first birth your previous one you don't know in fact let's put it this way if you believe in the words of the saints yes if you believe they're not liars then you have to take reincarnation as real okay simple as that either they're liars and reincarnation is not real or you have to accept reincarnation simple okay so that aside now let's say previous lives you've also had parents you've also had a family you've also had a job you've also had all of this stuff some people remember it some people don't that's a different matter again we'll put that aside but 
where is your love for your previous family members you don't even remember them you don't remember you know, there must be a daughter or a son you loved in a previous life you don't know their name right now if someone shows them to you somehow either through hypnosis or whatever method meditation whatever it is it'll seem like a dream something you're watching and guess what open your eyes and look around you this is as real as that the outcome of this that you're seeing around you your family right now whatever you love you won't remember this either so if you make your entire life about the maintenance of this which will go anyway including this body which claims everything as its uh, itself then you're wasting this life wasting this life having heard the message of the gurus if you can still continue to get caught up in things that are going to perish then you're wasting this life if you haven't heard it you have an excuse if you've heard it then you have to ask yourself why you're not living by it you see what will remain i tell you one thing everything you see everything you see is perishable everything you can see with your eyes look at everything don't forget to look at your body everything you can see with your eyes is perishable that which is imperishable you cannot see with your eyes you are that how will you see that mystics have used the term inner eyes looking inward that's the only way to discover what you really are everything you see outside externally with these eyes jo supna ar pekna aise jag ko jaan jag the entire jag everything is just like a dream because it will be forgotten its reality is as fickle as a dream then he says in mai kach sacho nahi there's nothing real in this at all nanak bin bhagwan in me kach sacho nahi there's nothing real in what you're seeing there's nothing real in itself the only reality right now in this moment regardless of what you're seeing is god the only reality right now that which sustains everything for example you're dreaming you see everything right all of it is appearing but you don't realize it you think you're in it okay so even the you that's in the dream is seen you're not re- you're not aware that it's seen you think you're the character you're seeing just like right now you see the body it's moving you're listening you're sitting down in a room somewhere or driving a car or something like this and you think it's you you think this body is you okay so similarly in the dream you take the body to be you right but you are not aware that the only thing that's real in that dream is the presence that in which the entire dream appears is the only thing that's real the dream itself is not real but that in which the dream appears that's real now in this context in our waking so called waking life everything that appears in it is like a dream none of it is real other than the source in which this is taking place you see so nanak bin bhagwan is in mai kach sacho nahi nanak bin bhagwan there's nothing real in what you're seeing other than that in which it is taking place that's the only reality your sense of being is a drop of the ocean of god 
this sense of being is imperishable. This drop is imperishable. You see? Because it is a drop from that ocean. It's a part of God. You see? So a part of God has the essence of God. Okay? And that is the part that's real. The one that sees this dream is real. The dream is false. The one that takes themselves to be a character in the dream, the character is false. The one that's deluded, apparently deluded, right? The, the sense of being that has deluded itself into thinking that it's a person, the being is real, but the delusion is covering it, you see? So delusion is just a wrong idea, a wrong belief. Guru Sahib says to see this world as a dream and make it a point to understand that you need to discover that which is permanent. You need to discover God, the one permanent in this entire dream. Guru Sahib next says in Salok number 24 Nis Maya Karane Prani Dolat Neet Guru Sahib mentions Prani again life breath where the person is dependent on the life breath but doesn't realize and he says nis din maya karane he says day and night day and night continuously the being not the not the permanent being but the person the character you've taken yourself to be your life the imagined person the prani the deluded one Nisdin Maya Karana, because of Maya, because of being deluded, because of thinking, not realizing the previous slok, not realizing the teaching in the previous slok that this world, everything you see is like a dream, is as real as a dream. The only reality is God. But the objects, everything you see, is like a dream. So it says Nisdin Maya Karani Prani Dolat Neet. Because of being deluded, you continue to be restless. Dolat. Your breath is also restless. You are also restless. You see, there's a link. But because of delusion, for example, in a dream, something you don't want to happen, you're very afraid. Now, you don't know you're dreaming. So something that you, you're driving a car and suddenly you come across something that's very scary and, and it, it makes you scared. So your breath starts to waver you start to become restless you start to become scared you want to avoid that okay so all of that is taking place in the dream none of it is real so nis din maya karne prani dolat neet now day and night because of not realizing the truth that which is false can continue to delude you you can continue to be deluded by it because you are not yet aware of that which is permanent the greatest way to get rid of fear is to discover that which is permanent. Because there is no fear in that one. Nirpa. Nirvair. No enmity. Nothing to run away from also. You see, it's all connected. Because it's all speaking about the same thing. Spirituality revolves around the same topic. It revolves around you, your relationship to God. Why do they bring in the world then? Why is Guru Sahib bringing the world? Because we are living in it. Due to whatever factors it is, we, are, we, we seem to see ourselves in a world. But Guru Sahib is teaching us how to relate to that world. To realize it is a dream so that find that which is real. Find the real in the false. Find the real. You see? Find the one behind the mask. Don't fall for the mask that the one is wearing. Don't fall for the mask of this world. Everything you see around you, guess what? Guru Amar Das Ji in Anand Sahib says, E vish sansar tu dekh de, e har ka roop hai. This whole world that you see, this is God's form. 
this is the sight of the mystics my dear this is the sight this is how they see this world they see it as God's form they don't see it as individual objects of course they see it as individual objects but their consciousness has been so raised up that within everything they are able to see God you see within everything they are able to see God Guru Sahib tries to take us very high we should follow because they have seen the truth the saints and the mystics of all religions have seen the truth listen to them don't listen to limited beings who only argue about theory if you listen to any saint you will realize how inclusive they are they don't exclude anyone for they have already realized God in everything their speech is not of hatred their speech is not a division their speech is not a separation in fact let's say it in a very simple way no matter how high a person says they are no matter how high let's say let's say they're praised by the whole world okay so-called spiritual person being praised by the whole world if any statement of hate against any kind of human being animal creature is mentioned that person has not met God that person does not know God that being does not know anything does not know truth if any word of hatred against anything comes out then realize this let's continue with this alok sorry I got sidetracked there just now so nis din maya karane prani dolat needs now because of being deluded not knowing the truth we continue to be restless kotan me nanak ko narayan jay chit says guru sahib says kotan me in a million there are only a few who have the lord within their hearts you see he's talking about the majority of the world we can also see that in our lives that the majority see this spirituality may be something it sounds like a lot of people are speaking about it but how many are really living it and if you look at it as a percentage of the population in this world and you look at how many are really living it it's very few so guru sahib says kotan me nanak ko narayan jay chit very very few have the lord within their hearts the rest are all busy being deluded by this world because they are unable to see that there's nothing other than the lord they have taken what they see to be real and they have forgotten that that which they cannot see the lord which is within pervading everything in an unmanifested form but pervading because for life to even be possible it's only because of god so very few there are in every generation in every period there have always been few who have experienced god and it's very important in this day and age i'm telling you we're somehow very lucky because before to hear such wisdom that we can now go and search online and find a teacher and listen to their teachings and even listen to so much in depth before to even be able to hear such things we'll have to go far far distances have to travel to go and sit at their feet and now you can actually hear them and that you can use technology in this way where distance is cut and you are already in satsang with those who have realized god now the question is if it's already available why aren't we making full use of it because of this 
nisdin maya karane because we are still being deluded we still think we have something to lose by following god you see but what can you lose by following god whatever you're scared of losing you will lose anyway nothing is yours all is god's you either give up your mental ownership of them right now or they'll be pulled away from you at the moment of death it's as simple as that whatever you're holding on to as tightly thinking it's yours including your body will go at death so is your game in life your mission in life to hold on to everything that's going to go anyway isn't that a losing game rather than finding that which is imperishable so somehow we have been confused you see somehow we've been taught in such a way to take the perishable as real and to take the imperishable as theory and unreal and something you hear about from time to time feel a bit inspired by or maybe even use to try and improve your perishable life you see when i say it that way it doesn't make sense you see it doesn't make sense to do anything but find god to do anything that's the real purpose the real purpose of the human being guru arjan dev ji has said pai prapat manuk de horia gobind milan ke hai teri bariya kabir sahib has said bhagat kabir ji has said he says manas janam dulamb hai hot na barang bar what he says is o kabir the human body is precious you don't get it over and over again don't be under this mistaken notion that just because you were born as a human being your next life you'll be a human being again you'll get a chance to do it again you never know you don't know what circumstances you're going to be born in due to the karmas that you're committing in this lifetime and you don't know what stash of karmas you have before that are going to be put in front of you you don't know until the moment of death what's going to happen to delude you you may be pure your entire life at the very last moment if some negative karma comes up and that's what you die with then what will be your you know what will be your chance to discover this teaching again and the question is very simple if you've come across the teaching in this lifetime if you've come across this even this this word pai prapat manuk de horia gobind milan ke teri bariya even just this much you already know the purpose of life the real purpose of life to meet god now if you know that that is the purpose of life avar kaaj tere kitna na kam nothing else is worth doing doesn't mean to leave everything but to make that your goal make that the aim make that be the thing in which your life revolves you see because that's real everything else comes and goes and in the end will go while you still have breath it things will come and go just like the breath is coming and going and then once the breath goes everything you own is gone you see so it's really something to contemplate and see that having heard this teaching why are we not serious about it yet and it all comes down to sangat it all comes down with meeting people r- r- kindling that fire and keeping it burning you see keeping it burning not once in a while and then cool off and then get lost by the world but this is what guru sahib says is the nature of the world the majority nis din maya karne the majority will be deluded by their karmas by their actions by different things that they do and then kotan mein nanak ko narayan jay chit next guru sahib says jaise jalte budh buda upjay bin se neet jag rachna taise rachi kaho nanak sun meet oh my friend guru sahib says oh my friend please understand that just as bubbles form on the wave and pop they continuously form and pop form and pop form and pop please realize that the world is exactly like that it's like the bubble on the wave it forms and it pops how many countless times 
have you been here you don't know guru sahib told you has said over and over again how many countless times have you been here now you've heard the message yeah now you've heard what's the purpose of life you probably heard before as well and because we didn't go we didn't follow that because we did not make that the priority of the life we're still here you see we're not free from the cycle yet we're still here because we have not made that the priority now you've had the chance again by god's grace karmi aave kapra by god's grace by his karam by his meher by his grace we've got the human body again in this human body we've come across the teachings again the teachings are everything you see in this world is like bubbles popping forming and popping forming and popping forming and popping just like your thoughts form and pop form and pop breath comes in and goes out comes in and goes out everything is constantly shifting constantly shifting constantly moving okay guru sahib says jag rachna taise rachi this is how this world is ev nothing is stable please listen to this guru sahib says listen oh friend nothing is stable In the next slok Guru Sahib says prani he uses that word again to remind us constantly that we are literally dependent on this breath the person we've taken ourselves to be the entire life construct that we've designed around ourselves is all dependent on this one breath and he continues to put that in prani he says prani kachu na chetai mad maya ke and So I guess when he's referring to prani he's referring to those who are dependent on the one breath but are unaware of it and they are deluded. He doesn't realize that he's only dependent on the breath. He thinks the whole world revolves around him, you see. So he says prani kachu na chetai. Says this being the majority of us are not even aware of what's happening. We are deluded constantly by maya. we are drunk mad maya ke and we're blind we're blinded by maya not realizing how much we're actually deluded because we're constantly pulling after different things the first shlok we read uh, in the beginning today talked about the three things mamta moha ahankar and lobh so this is what guru sahib is talking about that the whole world majority are caught up in iness in mindness in attachments in greed chasing after the things in this world so guru sahib has given us in the previous shlokas now for before this and continuing right now saying comparing and contrasting the saints the ones who narayan jay jit who are very few and those who are constantly chasing after this world and guru sahib is is f- showing us what's the right way to view the world to see that everything is changing to see it's like bubbles rising and popping to see that it's like a dream nothing is real in it other than god and that to find god is the true purpose so spirituality is just mainly that realizing your true nature realizing the source and the relationship between you and god and the guru teaches you not theoretically but practically by connecting you with the truth that you already are so in this shlok which will be the last shlok for this session will be prani kachu na chetai mad maya ke and kaho nanak bin har bhajan parat tahe jam phand guru sahib says the being is unaware and is constantly deluded and drunken and blinded by maya not seeing that everything comes and goes he chases after the perishable things he thinks that it's worth accumulating he thinks god is just a pipe dream and he thinks the world is what's real and he says kaho nanak bin har bhajan without serving god without being turned to god without being directed to god the only truth that is every one just gets stuck in the noose of death again and again we continue to chase after the bubbles that pop we chase after it with greed when it pops we suffer then 
a new bubble gets formed we feel more attachment towards that run towards that that pops we suffer and we continue to go in this cycle until we realize that this is the nature of this world it's like a dream it's like waves and bubbles it comes and goes it's not steady and to find the permanent one while we still have this breath otherwise our fate is simply this continue to be deluded and the delusion doesn't just end in this lifetime it doesn't even end due to suicide it continues because delusions power is great and it's only great as long as you don't listen to the guru's words but once you listen to the guru's words and pray for the guru's blessings and the guru's grace that you can live according to their teachings fall at their feet don't try and be wise and try to understand everything the gurus are saying just fall at their feet tell the guru ab hum chali thakur pe haar oh my lord now i'm coming to you i have nothing to gain i have nothing to lose ab hum chali thakur pe haar i am i'm i'm not coming to ask you for anything i am just coming to you I'm coming for your shelter. I'm just coming to you. Ab hum chali thakur pe haar jab te sharan prabhu ki aai ever since I have come to your feet. By your grace I've come to your feet. Raak prabhu paave maar. Now you keep me or you kill me. But now that I've realized that this is the truth. Nothing in this world is worth leaving this truth because everything in this world will perish at death the truth is permanent discovering this truth you discover your own permanence this is the greatest gift of this lifetime may we not waste it गुण गोबिंद गायो नहीं जन्म अकारत कीन कहो नानक हर पज मना जह बिद जल को मीन